quasi-connectivity has to single-handedly be the most confusing aspect of Java Redstone, and I think every single player who's tried to do Redstone has run into quasi-connectivity issues at one point or another. So that's why in today's video, we're going to be diving into the dark and twisted world of quasi-connectivity, so that hopefully by the end of this video, you will understand everything that there is to know about this confusing aspect of redstone. So to start, there are four components that are affected by quasi-connectivity, and that is the piston, the sticky piston, dropper, and dispenser. For the sake of this video, I will be using the piston as an example, but just know that all four of these components are affected in the same way. Put very simply, quasi-connectivity is a property of these four components that allows them to be activated by anything that would activate the space above them, no matter what is actually in that space. So for example, we have an air block here, but if, even if we were to put a block here that is still powering our piston below it because it thinks that it's powered by the block above it. Essentially, these components think that they're two blocks tall and whatever powers the block above it also powers the block below it. Similar to how doors function. Doors are actually two blocks tall, so whatever powers the top half also powers the bottom half. And this is actually the original origin of this bug slash feature is the original coding of the piston and sticky piston and these two components dropper and dispenser were copy and pasted straight from the door so that's why we have this strange behavior but if quasi connectivity was that simple it would really be that simple but unfortunately it's not that simple and there's a lot more that goes into it but don't worry because once you understand it it really is quite simple so where quasi connectivity really gets complicated is it can cause situations where pistons should be activated by quasi-connectivity, but don't realize it. So for example, when I flip this lever, this piston should be activated, but it doesn't realize it yet. And in order to get this piston to realize it's being powered is by giving it a block update. To put it simply, a block update is an event that tells a block in Minecraft to check its surroundings and see if it needs to change state. So for those of you who notice that this situation is exactly the same situation that we had earlier, I will point out that in the example earlier, we had a constant block updater just by two observers facing each other and a powered rail there that will constantly update this piston, allowing it to activate and deactivate whenever we power and depower it. But if we remove that constant block updater, then the piston will not realize that it's powered and depowered until it gets a block update. Well, now you might be wondering, well, how do I give my pistons an update? What constitutes a block update? Well, there are several ways. Basically, anytime anything changes in the block, it is a block update. So that could be placing a block, destroying a block, changing a block like this or this, activating adjacent redstone components, such as redstone dust, powered or activator rails, any adjacent redstone component, such as the note block, dispenser, dropper, pistons, even other observers. But speaking of observers, it's basically anything an observer would detect would also update your piston. And that is because observers are the game's built-in block update detectors, or BUD for short. Essentially, anything that would activate a observer would also activate a bud powered piston however if you put the power source or the way of activating the pistons close enough to the pistons they will update and activate at the same time so for example this button updates and activates the pistons at the same time because it's close enough to the pistons same thing with this repeater here because it's close enough to the piston it powers it and updates it at the same time and then here's our final configuration where this torch is close enough to the pistons where it gives them a block update as well as powering them. But there are many more situations where the power source is too far away to update the pistons and therefore we need a block update. So for example, in this situation, we have this lever powering this iron block here and both of these pistons are powered but not activated because they need a block update in order to do so. And the same concept applies in this example as well, except instead of having a lever on this iron block, we're powering it with a repeater, but it functions exactly the same. And the same happens with a redstone block as well. And yes, this is exactly why sticky pistons with redstone blocks on top of them will never retract. But once you get over a few of those annoyances, there are a few benefits to quasi-connectivity. For example, you can have seemingly wireless interactions with the pistons. So this lever is activating this piston below here, but it doesn't look like it because of course that connectivity. I recently installed this downward elevator in my survival Minecraft base. And because of quasi connectivity, it's basically as simple as can be. And if we didn't have it in the game, 
we would have to make this huge circuit just to activate and deactivate the piston here. I mean, of course, we could move the button down and move the torch down here as well, but if we wanted to keep the button at eye level, quasi-connectivity is our best friend. Now, I'm not smart enough to have any super big, compact redstone circuits on hand to show you, but I do know that people who design redstone doors or like gambling machines or things that move a lot uh, utilize quasi-connectivity a lot in their builds just to make things much more compact and small and fit in a small, that's what compact is, I, I don't know what I'm saying. But just for the basic player that doesn't design huge 10 by 10 doors or whatever, cause connectivity is good to be familiar with and good to know how it behaves so that you can avoid confusion and frustration in your redstone designs. So hopefully you found this video informative and helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.